Now, uh, with the, the low blow of what the city did with the cousin situation, how, how do you think that the, like, like the, the hip hop community thinks about that, like the cousins now still being a cop after what he said? I mean, no. Talking with the Dell awesome. situation when he yeah. was speaking. Yeah, on. the cousins. I'm going to tell you what anymore. I think about that. I think that was. R.P. Dell. Yeah, R.P. to him too. Like, make sure we put that out there. Like, but what I think about that, I think like he did that because where are you from? Corey or something like that? He's from Gerard. Gerard, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's why I think like he was talking like that in the bar because somebody would have knocked his head off. Like, if he was over here talking like that, like in these local bars, like, don't care, like police or not like because he didn't have no badge on up in there nobody would have knew like you know what i'm saying he just speaking in front of the camera and i don't think that's right that he's still a cop anybody anyway because if one of like just like this i just don't think that was right period like that's all i, I mean i'm gonna tell that. you man um he been saying what they all say on behind closed doors mm -hmm. he just got caught you know what i'm saying they all think that and we all know it it's just mm -hmm. now coming to light and stuff and they still didn't basically do nothing about it so uh, we have to definitely have some type of change. Mm -hmm. and something got to come about because it's crazy. I don't think he personally went out of his way to you know apologize to anyone. You know exactly. Uh, he, he, he had care. someone write him a letter and they send that to the newspaper. You know that's that's not an apology. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, he's supposed to get on national television. Yeah, he was supposed to go to that man's mother yeah. and apologize for his, his actions, his behavior before definitely. he even got uh, reprimanded or put back into the force or whatever he's doing. But you know, he was really it's a deeper issue, man. It's it's deeper than that. Well, did you see uh, in the newspaper? I think a month ago, he was uh, playing basketball with like, like local teams, and that's not going to that's not going to solve anything. You know, he's got a picture, you know, with a basketball in his hand. What does that mean? You know, <laughs> what's, what's that gonna do? That just mean they got a good PR department. It, yeah, to that's it. it. But you know, I think what's even worse than what Cousins did was afterwards when they tried taking the video off of YouTube. That was now that's scary. That's that's a definitely a fear thing. I've talked to a Vancouver a Cop Watch, and they were kind of like, "Well, you live in a small town area. You don't have what we have with our cops." And then I explained that to them, and they're like, "Oh my God, you do have some problems." Yeah. They've never heard of every, anything like that in their life. And then I talked to other people in Asheville and other bigger towns, and they were even shocked. And, and, and how, how do you feel about that, like like a cop helping, no, not just a cop, the chief of police is helping a cop take down evidence. I mean. Right, so how do you look at that? You know, who do you turn to? Like, who is yeah. the authority figure if they working together like that? It's crazy. Well, if they did that, just think about what else they hid, you know. Right, what we don't past. know about, right. Definitely. Let's talk about the cop Libel, like, when he when he stole them grams and he only, he only did, like, how long he did up in there? Like, we went to rehab, rehab or, something? Yeah. or something like that. Let that have been somebody else. Where all them people at from downstate yeah, like, who've been uh, accused and sentenced and everything? Some of them might have hung it up. They might have committed suicide or whatever because of this guy and he's over here taking his stuff and stuff like that. He's authority figure. So how do he get slapped on the wrist for that? He's authority figure. You're supposed to strip him of all that uh -huh. and put him out there as being a criminal or things of that nature. But they don't do it. Well, yeah, like if we, well, like stealing from the police station, that should be a huge crime in itself. Like, mm -hmm. like uh, just having it as a crime. You know, like, but can you imagine if like one of us right now just exactly. went, walked into the police station and just was like having a buffet, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Basically, that's what that guy And did. still getting paid. Hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, speaking also about that same type of corruption, what's that judge name that like, he, he was caught with a gun and they let him off the charges? Was that Carney, Judge Carney? Carney. Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure. Not 100 percent. I believe that's his name. Uh, now, how do you feel about that situation? Like they, they found him with a with a weapon, and he got off all the charges. I don't know if that was registered to him or something. Uh, he totally know. got off the charges on that. Was. I mean, <laughs> it all come back to the same thing, man. It's a deep situation, man. It's 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 um it's basically they want to make people in the police relations better, but it's impossible when you still got the line dividing them. People on other sides of the fence. It's crazy. I think I feel like they they, they feel like they can do foul play because they authorities and they just get away with it. And because they authorities and because they be on TV, the 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 the, the other authorities like the they don't want them to get in trouble because they feel like they doing the right thing. So they they cover it up like give them a slap on the wrist like all right man you just gotta chill like you know like, what I'm don't saying get caught next don't time. get caught next time like and that's how I feel like I don't feel like that's right. Right, man. they all in cahoots, man. Well, it just seems like the whole city. I was shocked when I saw on CNN News how they said the officer cousins should be, you know, fired, let go. You know, he should quit himself. 
And you know that was on CNN News, and the person saying this was the guy who runs the whole NWACP. Basically, you know, he's almost considered a world leader in my book. Right. Mm -hmm. And to have him point his finger, and no one does anything in this town at I mean, all. I have respect for our mayor, but like, why did our mayor allow this to go on? That's because it's such a small town, and everybody's so uh, tight knit and grew up together and things of that nature yeah, they that they all watch out other. for each other and sweep stuff. Like you still ain't hearing a whole lot about it. They sweeping that under the rug too, just like the cop who got caught with the drugs and the judge with the gun. They pushing that to the back burner. That's crazy. That's some stuff that needs attention, not only national attention, but all over the world because that's that's bananas. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, like I do the cop watching thing, and I meet so many people that like tell me these stories, but yet they're so scared to go out and say their story, and they feel like like the cops will go after them afterwards. And a lot of times when people say, hey, the cops are harassing me, they're like, well, you've got to prove motivation behind why a cop would do that. And if you said, hey, I did this video against this cop and said my story, and now that cop's mad, there's legit motivation. And if the people in Erie won't listen to you, there's someone in an international skill that will. Like, for instance, there's an organization called Cop Busters. What they did in uh, Texas was, uh, they, they set up this house, made it look like a drug house. When they came and busted into that door, the only thing they found was a, a grow room with Christmas trees and a sign saying that, uh, you know, you've all been set up, now you're part of a live interaction uh, uh, reality show mm -hmm. called Cop Busters. And they, they were definitely shocked at that. And that, that could easily happen to Erie Cops because what Erie Cops, did they, they make up their laws as they go along. Like, for instance, Oh wait, this is a bad neighborhood and you happen to be here at three o'clock at night. We're going to search you now. That is not proper cause. Yeah, and uh, a lot of times when they roll up and randomly say, hey, I don't know who you are. What's your name? Let me see your ID. You don't have to tell them anything by law. There is no law that says you have to talk to a cop unless you're committing crime. In that situation, you say, officer, I do not consent to my conversation with uh, cops. If I have not committed a crime, I want to leave now. Mm -hmm. And basically, if they, 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 can't, they, they can't say anything, you have, to, you have the right to leave. And then you got cops like DeLuca, Nolan, Victory. You don't say nothing to them. They get out their car, slam you, do what you got to do. Then they slapping charges on your face, knowing you didn't do nothing because you ain't cooperating with them. And I don't feel like that's right. They all dirty cops in my book, and I didn't see them do things personally, just being out here. So, like, you know, definitely gonna put that on the record. Now, you've, you've all seen the videos where, like, they use their spotlights on me, right? Mm -hmm. Now, now, uh, what's what's illegal about that is, is that they see that I have a, a, a camcorder in front of their face. Now, their excuse is when they see a camcorder, they go, well, you know, we didn't know what that was, so we had to turn on the spotlight. But if they shout out things like Spotlight TV or if there's like three minutes before they turn that on, mm -hmm. that's definitely proven harassment, but yet no one even gets a slap on the wrist about that. Now, do you think, now what do you think is the motivation for them trying to block my camcorder? Why would they do that? I'm saying basically they know what you're doing, you know what I'm saying, and they just, that's just ignorance, like, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's all I can right. call it. Haters. Like, haters. They, know they, they see what you're doing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They, they basically don't want to be caught on camera doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. You know right. what I'm saying? So they try to They don't want to make it camera. rough for you to try to scare intimidation and scare you to not do it no more because you might catch something one time that they really didn't want you to catch. Because it, that's so probably how they, they get their, like, adrenaline rush every night is to have those moments that they wouldn't want captured, right? Right, exactly. Or maybe they just don't want the girls that they're trying to pick up at the bar to see, remember them on the YouTube video and yeah. say, hey, aren't you a cop, you know? Right, right, exactly, exactly. This is Paul Williams with Ripping Tattoo Studio, Erie's finest tattoo shop. You just watched a Christian Lestat production.